We will also baseline productive analysis. Baseline productive analysis, if we don't have enough data for unhindered periods, we can compute or disruption claims through baseline productive analysis. Actually, baseline productivity is important because in our schedule, we have a baseline, right? Be before commencement of the work, actually, we need to prepare our baseline as a contractor. And after signing the contract, after some time, which is written in the contract, we have to submit our detailed schedule to the owner. Most of the owner ask resource loaded schedule. What I mean, quantities of materials and labor numbers, man hours, should be loaded to the P6. So in that case, if we have this kind of schedule, then we are able to measure our baseline productivity. The first step is to establish the baseline productivity, which represents the expected or planned level of productivity on the project under normal conditions. This is important. This baseline is typically determined based on historical data. Actually, how I put my productivity to the baseline, I used my historical data and I put labor productivity accordingly to my baseline schedule. Or I can use industry standards. I can say, okay, I put my labor productivity according to industry standards. Or contractors own performance on similar projects. So also we can consider it is historical data. So actually the productivity I put to the schedule either represents my historical data or industry standards. So I can use also baseline productivity. But there are some pros and cons for baseline productivity. So if you don't have enough data to get sample to the measured mile method or work rate sampling method, based on productivity is or other chance to compute disruption. But our first preference is measured mile or work rate sampling because the productivity coming from the sample is related to this project. Since the nature of projects differ, so we cannot obtain the same productivity in all projects. Therefore, my industry standards here cannot match the productivity of my work. Historical data, for instance, I have many projects before productivity for brick walls can be different than the labor productivity in my current project because nature is different. Nature of project is different. That's why we call each project is unique because think about like this, completely same house we are building in different place and we are going to use the same labors. Once the labors built this house, then the labors are going to move to other place to the second house. The labors are completely same, but the productivity of the same labor for the same work, identical work, can differ because one of the dwelling is in, let's say, United Kingdom and the other dwelling is in the Dubai. It's in Dubai and it's really hot and uh, high humidity. You know, the climate condition also affects the labor's productivity. Even in the same area, both are, are to be constructed in the United Kingdom, let's say, in the same region, in London, let's say. If the management of these two projects are different, the productivity may differ. So that is why owner or dispute resolution parties, sometimes they object to historical data and industry standards. So finding the sample from the same project is important. But if you don't have data to measure, to compare the unhindered period and hindered period, then baseline productivity is or 
another chance to conduct disruption analysis. I will give an example to you how we can compute. I will copy this one. Okay, this is based on productive analysis. So I will remove the grid lines. Okay, a little better. So let's say there is activity. This is duration. This is actual duration. Let's say this is quantity. This grid. This quantity. This productivity. So there is, let's say, brick wall. There's an activity as brick wall. And the unit is square meter. And quantity, let's say this is the budget quantity or plant quantity, is 5,250, let's say. According to my historical data, let's consider brick wall quantity is supposed to be 1.2, let's say. This is how we measure the productivity, guys. When R divided by unit, right? That's what I have. So let's say this is the number of labor, let's say. For this area, I am going to put, allocate 20 labors, let's say. What will be my duration? My duration will be total quantity, which is square meter, multiplied by men r, and this will be give total men r. So, total men r divided by total labor working the day, and let's say put bracket and multiply eight working hours in a day. So, consider we work eight hours in a day. So, the total duration, so this one, I will round up this one. So, this duration, let's say, without holidays, right? This is the duration without holidays. Actually, I need 40 days to complete this job. So, this is my plan, actually. Then, during the course of the project, it took, this will be also, without all day. It took 50 days because of disruption. This is planned productivity. What will be my actual productivity? This will be R, this will be R. Okay. So, my actual productivity means men R divided by unit. So, What's the man R I spend? I need to find. I have number of labor 20. Let's keep the number of labor is same. I plan 20 labor. I work with 20 labor in actual. So it can change. If it change, let's say my labor in reality 30. It should be 30. But in my example, keep the same. So I have 20 labors worked for this area. How many days? 50 days they worked. How many hours in a day? They worked eight hours. Okay, this is the total man hour. And how much units we executed? 5,250. So this is my, guys, new productivity, actual productivity in my project. So what I need to do, I need to find the differences. So this is the disruption claim, let's say. I need to subtract them to find the differences of productivity. This is my difference of productivity. So 
if I multiply this one with the total quantity, then I will find total man R. This equation is going to give result for total man R. If I multiply with the cost of man R, let's say if it is $12, let's say. So this will be my claim. So this, let's say, unit cost of labor. Labor. This is $12, let's say. This is the another information. So this one, it will be right. This dollar divided by R, right? So this will be my claim, guys. $20,400. This is the how we can conduct baseline productivity analysis. However, as you can imagine, this 1.2, it is just coming from my baseline schedule. And owner can object saying that this 1.2 doesn't show the nature of our work. So our nature of our work's productivity sh should be higher than 1.2. They can claim. And you need to prove 1.2, guys. If you don't have samples from the work in different place, showing the productivity under the normal circumstances, sometimes it is difficult. So, for instance, some of you can say, okay, we don't have productivity in our project. So, in that case, how we can compute like this? Let's say some of the projects don't have planned productivity. So, they have duration. They have duration. Let's say we have 40 days duration and they have quantity in their baseline and they know 20 labors work over there. So how they can compute the plant productivity in this case. So this is the number of labor multiplied by duration multiplied by daily working hours, which is eight eight divided by total quantity. Let's say, as you can see, these are the same guys. Okay. so. Okay. So, but in this case, the owner can claim that you don't have historical data. This 1.2 is coming from 40. How did you compute this 40? Just you made, made up 40 days. So, according to 40 days, you computed productivity. And this productivity was not in your baseline schedule. If you don't have productivity in your baseline schedule, so you are not able to compute. Owner can claim because this 40, how did you compute this 40? Just made up. That's what they say, what they can claim. So information in our hands in the beginning of the project is really important. Record keeping is very, very important. Then we are able to compute or disruptionalize. Actually, disruption claim is the contractor's right because contractor lost money because of owner. Owner should compensate. If the contractor cannot get this compensation, contractor lose money. Maybe contractor cannot obtain benefit from this project. So these are really important to get disruption to achieve contractors' objectives in the project.